Right then, tonight's um, <clears throat> sorry, tonight's episode. Um, yeah, I've got a good one tonight. I, I'm not going to talk entirely about it all of the time, um, but it has flicked a switch. It's been a bit of a catalyst, and I'll come on to that in a minute. This is something I can deal with from personal experience. Um, again, I've had a few that no, 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 not doing that. Uh, I have one groups of dozen cyclists that bunch together and make it difficult to um, to overtake. Can't do that. I know too many cyclists. Some of them are quite high ranking. Consider them personal friends. So I'm I'm, I'm not going to offend cyclists. You know we need to be proud of our um, British cyclists and you know the the spin off from that and the way that more bikes are being sold and the people are out there getting some exercise, which brings me on to the next topic. But and and doing some fizz and all the rest of it. You know they cycle in teams. They want to emulate their heroes and, and do what the teams do. They want to wear their lycra, have their, wear their helmets, have their bikes. And, and together as a team, they help each other out. You know, they share bananas and energy drinks and gels and stuff like that. I mean, they, they share uh, all manner of things. Not performance enhancing. Just went a bit Brad for a moment. So anyway, the topic tonight... Um, provided by Andy Mumro, it's people who use electric buggies. I can't do that. I can't do that. There's some genuine people out there who use buggies. However, I do have experience of um, of some people with buggies from my uh, my days delivering prescriptions, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, bit of product placement, I suppose. Uh, when my dear stepfather was alive, he was a stubborn old so and so, so. I went to a shop in Minehead, who, uh, I won't name them without their permission, but they're independent, they like people living, and they loaned me one for a week uh, with an option to buy, and then um, my stepdad bought a, uh, a new one from them, and they did a good deal, sadly he passed away and they bought the thing back, so if you ever need something like that, just look them up, thank you Steve, you know who you are. Um, so yeah, buggies. I can't really do that because there are genuine users out there but some of you uh, may or may not know that about four years ago for six months only I delivered prescriptions for a local pharmacy and it's the co-op pharmacy that doesn't exist anymore because the bank went pear-shaped so the co-op group sold the pharmacy to get the money back to balance the books with the bank and it's run by another organisation now I'm sure I've got fantastic policies I run a brilliant business, and uh, so I'm not commenting about them. So, buggy owners. I used to deliver to a a family in a flat. Um, The couple had a buggy each. Their carer, I use the term loosely, is their son, who's probably about 25, and the same weight. I suspect he's probably got a buggy himself now, probably made by Massey Ferguson. But they were nice enough people. Only never ever knocked on the door once because um, they shouted at me because they were actually too idle to come to the door. So thereafter, I'd just go in and get a signature and and dump the kit on them. Now, one day, I had to take a refrigerated medication out to Kingston St Mary, which I couldn't deliver. So I had to take it back to the shop because it had to go back in the fridge because it only got a a 20-minute non-shelf life, uh, non-fridge life. So I eventually got to them, um, I don't know, maybe half an hour outside of my normal delivery slot. My normal delivery slot, because there were no slots. And they went, God, did they ever go off on one at me because I was late. They still had three week, weeks worth of medication, but I got it in the air. Now, I accept that they were suffering from anxiety. So I took it on the chin, got a signature, slung me hook in the knowledge that he'd be as nice as pie next time. I didn't feel quite the same way 20 minutes later when they were in their buggies and the pair of them nearly ran me over because they're in a race for home because their fish and chips are getting cold. And this is the sort of thing that really annoyed me. When people get buggies, some of them, they think they need everything on a plate or out of paper. Um, but yeah, it's one of the reasons I gave up the job. And the other reason was, you got the co-op pharmacy, 
Then there's a door that leads to the flats upstairs. And then you've got the co-op shop. And on another occasion, I delivered to a lady in the, the, the flat above the pharmacy. She wasn't there, so I dropped a card. And then I met her at the bottom of the stairs. I thought, great, I'll give her the prescription. She dragged me all the way back up the stairs. She couldn't handle her, uh, manage her prescription at the time because she was carrying 80 fags. And those are the sort of things that really irritate me. And this was a policy about projecting a year's turnover by giving people free deliveries. When actually, they should have been promoting people getting off their asses and walking to the pharmacy and picking up their own prescriptions. But there you go, the co-op pharmacy's done and dusted. Um, so there you have it. Bit of a somber one tonight. Uh, but thanks Andy Mumro, you've you flicked a switch. There's something I really need to get off my chest. But I left them because it was morally wrong what they were doing. So chew that over, see where it takes you. Um, some may have noticed I've opened up a new page on Facebook, which is um, Pedestrian Room 101. A few of you have liked it already. So I'll upload this onto my page and then share it to that. But feel free to share it, especially uh, you know who you are, my Starbucks boyfriend, because you are a, um, a star of TV and film and the right people to get to see it. And I might be working on uh, shopping channels before long. Not. Cheers.